is only war. What is up, gents? 40k Dirtbags here. We got a battle report for you today. Uh, we got Death Guard, our boy Nolan's on the channel, uh, versus our uh, Chaos Cult list. This is the list I actually brought to ACO that we placed uh, fourth in out of 250 players. We did get put ranked number two Chaos Space Marine player in the world last year. Uh, that was mainly with Abaddon, Terminators, uh, all that fun stuff. Um, and then the year before that, we ranked number one Grey Knight player in the world. So this channel is really good for coaching rules competitive battle reports uh teaching all that stuff so if you guys are new to the channel hit the like subscribe do all the youtube stuff but we have so much coming up in the channel in 2024 uh we're so close to 10,000 subscribers once we hit that we have a lot of cool stuff coming out for our dirt bags uh especially with the patreon dirt bags as well if you guys uh join the patreon page you'll get to see these battle reports and tactics on patreon first before they hit youtube and if you guys really want that coach in your corner, we have the competitive dirtbag page where you guys get to bounce questions off us, ideas, tactics, anything you guys need help with. Uh, and then Grandmaster Dirtbags, if you guys want specific lists or tactics that you guys want to see up on the channel, we get to play that live for you. Uh, we also do once a call every single month where you guys get to go over um, lists, tactics before an RTT or GT that you really want to prepare for. That's what the competitive dirtbag and Grandmaster Dirtbags are for. Well, the Grandmasters mainly, but the competitive dirtbags, if you guys just want that coach in your corner it's always good to have somebody that plays this this game really competitively and almost professionally uh ask them ideas or any questions you guys need if i don't play the army specifically we have other dirt bags that can help out in your specific uh field or army uh, i do death guard chaos sisters uh custodies and um uh, Grey Knights. So those are my main armies. Everybody else I have other dirt bags to kind of step in and help out uh, with. So if you guys want those specific armies, definitely head over to patreon.com and support us. And you get these videos ahead of time uh, as well. So we're heading out to L LSO coming up. We just got back from ACO. Uh, this one, again, plays fourth out of 250 player. We probably should have won uh, the, the tournament, but I definitely messed up against a Blood Angel player. I didn't rapid ingress. When I rapid ingress every single game uh, prior to this one, uh, but that's a whole video by itself. If you guys want to go check that out, it's about an hour long video going over this specific list, uh, Chaos Cultus, why it's so good, why it worked out, and what's going to be moving forward in Pariah Nexus. This battle report is prior to Pariah Nexus, but it's really good to practice um, a specific method army list going into a GT. That's really what Nolan was helping, helping me out with. So we actually able to play Death Guard before I got to um, ACO and actually play Death Guard on stream. I made it to three stream games on War Games Live. So if you guys want to go check that out, it's over on War Games Live. I think I, I posted it in Discord as well. And it's in that uh, video I post on YouTube, the links uh, at the bottom. Um, but that's coming up uh, LSO. And then we have Nova coming up in August. Uh, and then Lone, uh, Las Vegas Open in January. I mean, Kiva always go out to that every single year. So if you guys are dirtbags, come up to me, say hi, uh, get some dirtbag dice uh, live at the GTs. And what else? We have merch. So we have new merch, thanks to our boy Sam. He's printing out a bunch of new stuff. So we have our Cypher model. Cypher is actually going to be coming up uh, almost in every single list, if not 99% of the list in Chaos. So the new Cypher model is uh, printed out, and it's a different sculpt, so it's a new proxy. It's going to be insane looking. So Cypher is up for sale. Uh, we have our Caldus Assassin, which is still up for sale. We just printed out a bunch of new ones for those. Those are going to be... Um, used in every single Imperial list. We have Kodias, who is still really good uh, in the meta because uh, you can use his ability off the table. Uh, we have the two Space Marine characters as well. And the new the new uh, print is going to be a Tech Marine. Tech Marines are really hard to come by, actually. We have some Grey Knight sculpts for that as well. So Grey Knight, Tech Marine, Cypher, Cal Assassin, and these other three uh, prints. If you guys get those prints, you get dice for 10% off right now. We have about 200 dice left of any of these colors. Um, so definitely get the dice while they're still here. And then we have widgets. So the widgets are used in every single game. They're they're so good. They're so bright. You can't lose them. Um, and then all the stickers uh, in the world. So let me know if you guys are interested in any of that. Head over to Discord. Uh, there's over a 1,000 members on Discord. Super awesome Discord. No bullshit if there is banned automatically. But they're, they're just such friendly guys. Everybody helps each other out there. No complaining. It's all just positive, good dudes that love the the game as much as you and they just all try and help out in, in all the different uh, armies as well so that's over on discord go ahead go ahead over and check that out um that was me and then uh all the sponsorships so the rexar lasers they are 
building new terrain pieces uh, that fits exactly the same Games Workshop uh, layout. So the the plates that they have uh, are exactly the same measurements that they're selling. Um, they're in the description below. If you use the code DIRTBAG or DIRTBAGS, uh, you get free shipping. So that's awesome. And then also they're sending me out a new terrain piece, uh, which is exactly the same with the Games Workshop uh, L's and, and U's. And the, the two inch rule, all that stuff is gonna be new in the upcoming battle reports. So I'm super excited for that. Um, so they're actually selling that. That's gonna be in the link below. So if you guys wanna support them, uh, support the channel uh, and get really, really good practice RTT GT terrain pieces that you can bring in any store that you guys have because it's really easy to, to fold up and, and pack up that's going to be uh, the Rexar lasers. So let's get into the battle reports or the, the lists, and then we'll get into the picture by picture, turn by turn, what we did good, what we could work on, and um, what the changes are moving into uh, Pariah Nexus. All right, today we got Chaos Colt. You notice the uh, awesome tray we got going on here. Let's see if we can pick out what we got. We got uh, eight, three ACDC units, I'm sorry, two ACDC units. One of the units has a scout, six. One of the units has the plus one strength and plus one attack if they're at half strength. We have one unit that comes back uh, D3 if they're within the Dark Apostle. Uh, we have Cypher, which we're testing out. Cypher, fully painted up by Mike uh, in Night Lord's theme. We got Fabius Bile, who's really good, honestly, in any secondary play, uh, even this detachment. We got a, a Rhino, which, you know, he is a good in the Rhino. Uh, we have a unit of D uh, Seekers that pair with the Demonettes. Uh, and then we have three Nurgling units. And over here is our whole other tray of 100 cultists. So we have basically 40 of the Traitor Guardsmen. And then we have 80, 20, 40, 80 of the uh, regular cultists. So we technically have 120 cultists going on the table today. Beautifully painted Death Guard army just got commissioned. Uh, Nolan is running this. He just ran it at an RTT the other day. Uh, so Nolan, what do we got today? We got Typhus. We got uh, three uh, Biologist Putrefires, two Foul Blade Spawns, a Malignant Playcaster. Um, then we have four units of Play Greens, two Ten Mans with all the fixings, two Five Mans with everything they can get. A uh, blow drone with uh, double uh, skewers, ten cultists, three rhinos, two predator destructors with heavy bolters and auto cannons, two PBCs with the entropy cannons, and uh, two units of nerdlings around it. That is a good, solid death card list. This is definitely something I would be playing, so can't wait. All right, guys, so those are the list. This is the deployment, this is the, the setup. This is what I was talking about, the uh, clear plexiglass from the Rexar lasers. Um, it's basically exactly the same way the Games Workshop layout is, all the same measurements. This is the uh, different terrain uh, that the store has. But like I said, if the store has terrain like this, you can just put it on any uh, clear plexiglass and you can use it that way. So it's always good just to have the uh, rectangles to practice for GTs and RTTs coming up. So this is the terrain setup. Uh, we did um corner deployments and vital ground vital ground is the one that i really needed to practice with because i played fixed every single matchup uh, and then i had to play tactical for this one because the things are so far spread out uh so i can't really do cleanse on those two objectives because the center one is not there so i really wanted to practice tactical uh it's a really good list to go against uh with tactical with death guard so the whole goal with this was to really just practice before the rtt now how we set up everything was i put the nerglings uh forward so that way i can do the scouts and actually have movement to do the scouts anytime you have infiltrators like nerglings or um, scouts or anything like that where you can uh, infiltrate up the board and have your scouts or scout unit come in behind them you're basically planning ahead of time on where you want your scouts to go if he put his nerglings over here I probably would have put mine on the other side right here and just had my scout moves go this way instead because when you scout you can't scout within nine inches of an opponent uh, model so that way if he puts his nerglings there i basically can't move up that far on this side so if you win the roll off always make sure you put your, your infiltrators where you want your scouts to go um and you're basically determining that prior to setting up your uh, your unit so infiltrators usually go down first uh if you have scouts if you don't have scouts it really doesn't matter you can put your infiltrators anywhere or if you want to put your infiltrators to block out their infiltrators or vice versa, something like that. So that's kind of where we put our nerglings. Now, the only thing I changed about this list was it took out the two nerglings, but we're keeping 
one Nurgling in the unit, so that way I can do the scouts with the Seekers and the unit of uh, a Cursed Cultist. So we have one unit of Cursed Cultist off the table, which we bring on uh, with a Rapid Ingress every single game, besides the one game that I lost, which was uh, bad on my part, so that sucked. But then we have Bile in the Rhino with uh, 10 Cultists. He's there to walk up and do actions on the objectives and just basically camp an objective for the entire game. Uh, and then we have a bunch of cultists up there, cultists back here, 20-man cultists off the table, and then two 10-man cultists off the table with the demon nets off the table uh, and two Nurgling units off the table as well. So everything, half the units in Deep Strike reserves, half the units on the table to kind of help out block the table edge. Now with Death Guard, you want to try and keep them in the deployment zone if you go first as soon as possible. So with my scouts moving up here, I'm going to put them uh, behind the terrain so they can't be shot. The other one started down here because he can't get line of sight to them uh, with the Predators. So he basically move can't move his Predator down here. The other guy can't move down that far over here. He can't move out this way to get shots. So I'm able to kind of line up and pre-measure with the laser where you can and cannot see. You both agree upon it, then he can't shoot you turn one as long as you set up your guys uh, in the angle. Now, he can move up his Predator over here and shoot way downtown, but if he does, I can then move up the rest of my green guys further this way with the Horde move uh, and just got, kind of get closer to him while staying on the other side of this terrain feature to then move up and charge and keep him in his backfield. So I was going to take that um, that shot. I was like, hey, if he, if he shoots me, I'll move up. If, it, if not, I'm still in, a, still in a good position right here. So we happen to go first against Death Guard, which is not good for Death Guard because we have so much movement turn one uh, to try and block him in. So our turn one, this is basically where we scout it up. So we don't have to be too uh, precision because we're going first. So these guys technically should be behind the ruins here, but again, we're going first, so we can move them back if needed. So these guys all just moved up six inches as far as they could. Again, Nurglings provided the movement to actually move or the space to actually move up behind them to get that scout going and then we stayed nine inches away from these these nerglings over here uh with our seekers now the seekers move up nine super fast then their speed 14 they can advance uh at plus one and charge at plus one and you get to reroll the advance and charge rolls you can't advance and charge but you get to reroll the charge rolls at plus one so they're super quick guys they're basically going to move up 14 charge something small so that way they don't get hit back uh and just kind of spread out sideways so that way they can block most of the deployment zone uh on whoever you're going first so that was the scout, scout move his scout scooted up the little little dudes over here. So that basically gave me a charge target because um, I know they're probably not going to be able to kill me back. Um, and then the Nurglings have to die as soon as possible with the curse, uh, Chaos Cultist because minus one to hit uh, with Death Guard and with Death Guard minus two to hit in combat, it's not good for us. So we have to kill these Nurglings as soon as humanly possible. So uh, our turn one, we again are playing tactical because we can't play fixed on this uh, deployment. So we get engage in all fronts. Uh, and Aerial Denial. Really good uh, turn one for us for Aerial Denial. So that means we don't have to commit as much. We basically just have to be behind this little wall right here. So we're within six inches or wholly within six inches with the Nurglings. So, and then the new Aerial Denial is so much easier. You just have to be within and then they can't be within. So the new Aerial Denial is a lot easier than what we had to do here. So these Nurglings are wholly within six inches of the center. The green guys basically advanced forward with their plus two uh, advance for the uh, Chaos Cult attachment. So they basically advanced up, waiting to go next turn uh, over here. Um, and actually, I think I can. I didn't commit them, so I waited a turn. So they basically moved up here and they waited because uh, again, they're gonna try and kill these guys as soon as possible. Um, and then the Seekers, what they did was they moved up 14 over this way and then they charged the cultists to keep the cultists off the table and kind of block out uh, most of his infantry over here. The infantry up here is going to take a while to get to me, but I wanted to block out his tanks and infantry, which is mostly on this side of the table over here. So we charged in, spread out, sideways, 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 and then sideways. And then if I can tag his tank, which I think I did in this back corner here, now he can't get out on this side of the tank. He has to get out on the back side of the tank, which just makes his his movement further away from me which is helping out a lot if i can keep death guard in their deployment zone because they're so slow that's going to win you a lot more games because of primary and secondary points so uh, we're basically setting up for a really really good turn two uh, for our advance and charge uh, units all over the table so our turn one we get uh, engage in all fronts for three with the seekers 
these two uh, quarters as well. And then uh, for Aerith and Iowa, we get five. So his turn one, he gets engaged in all fronts, which is, again, really tough to do on turn one uh, with Death Guard. And he gets Cleanse. So he's able to do a Cleanse with the um, units down here. So he fell back with the Cultists. The Nurglings scooted up and did Cleanse. And then everything else kind of got out of the Rhinos and charged my Seekers to try and get some type of movement onto the objective. So he stole the objective, so he's able to cleanse it. Um, but he's got fight first units over here with this guy uh and a bunch of you know a big 10 man just waiting to go now since they have fight first there's a lot of ways to get around fight first uh now with the heroic intervention being only one cp you have to watch out for that especially going against a fight first target but i'll show you what we do with this unit right here we have our first cultist unit move up uh turn two we have seven points for vital ground we get the center objective uh, which is five and then two in our deployment zone so that's seven points for the primary um what we get is secure no man's land so we have to control two of these objectives and we have to get a uh, storm hostile objective so we have to take over this objective down here so that's gonna be the goal take over this objective kill the plague marines and control both objectives um in the center the yellow unit commits so they they do the advance and charge i'm going to try and basically tie up this tank that tank and that tank and basically just throw this yellow unit in front of them to try and just keep them again in the deployment zone on their uh point if i can surround this tank and keep them in the tank for another turn that's going to be huge for us if you have a lot of bodies like we do over here and you can surround a tank without killing it they can't get out um, they'd have to desperate escape on a one or two, they die. And then if they die, the guys have to get out, which they're battle shocked and they can't really do anything afterwards. They can't charge. They can't do any of that stuff. So they're kind of just sitting there waiting to die next turn. So that's kind of what we want to do with transports. If you have a lot of bodies like we do up here, these guys came up here, um, on turn two, I wanted to get as many more bodies as I possibly can on the table because going second, you can rapid ingress them on turn two. But since I went first, I have to just bring them in and maybe I'll make a nine inch charge. If I don't. It's whatever they're there waiting for next turn if i do holy shit the opponent's kind of screwed uh bio in the unit moved up here uh and just waiting all the other guys starting to spread out to block the deployment zone so we blocked basically all of like draw nine inches from the the tank so we have blocked out from here all the way up here all the way down here and all of this so all he can do with his rapid ingress is bring typhus in behind this little wall right here and that's it he can't come in really anywhere else on the table because we're completely blocked out, which is what we did with the Death Guard guy at ACO as well. So if you guys want to watch that video, that's live on um, the one uh, video that we posted about ACO. So you can go watch that video against Death Guard. We brought in our cultists back here, or our demonettes. So if we make that charge, they're all OPSEC 2 into a, a rhino. So they're just going to steal the objective and, again, wrap them. And then the Nurglings back here um, just for more units in, in his backfield. So we actually blocked out all of that as well so he could really only come in down here uh with typhus so that was pretty funny we we almost blocked out his entire board on the top of turn two once we make this charge we'll basically block out the whole board so we had to bring in typhus if he didn't want him to die uh so this is how we get around fight first we moved up those cultists they're right here uh these guys scooted up uh around so i'm putting all the big guys near the plague marines because they're going to be the ones that are going to pile in uh and then the other guys are are going to be the charge target into either the um nurglings or the cultists down here so the purple guys have to make the charge into the nurglings or the the death guard so when they make that charge into the death guard they basically um base to base as many as they possibly can so if he does uh interrupt which he has fight first so he's going to fight before me he can't move any of his guys because all of his guys are base to base with all my crappy cultists then when my green unit charges let's say they charge these cultists all of these uh little guys are going to base to base the cultist blocking out base to base from these guys getting in there because i can't put this one guy in within one inch of this death guard so i technically can't get like here because if i can then i'll be a legal charge because i'm within one inch of this guy so i'm using the little guys to basically charge in move this little guy around the nurglings charge the nurglings and this guy move this guy a little bit around block off right there the other one blocks off there 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 and there so the little guys made their charge blocked off these guys the big guys charge 
and land like right here. But now the closest target is going to be the Death Guard. So the purple unit charges in first, so he doesn't counter. Purple unit charges in, base to base as many as he possibly can. The green unit then charges these two, and then they pile in or they land here, so that way in my turn, when he fights first, he's going to kill the cultist. And then when I fight, I can then pile in with my big guys into the fight first unit and just put all the big guys attack into that unit uh, with the play brains. That's one of my best videos I have on the channel is how to get around fight first, which in 10th edition, it's even better now with the counter charges. So that's kind of how we took out all 10 of these Plague Marines uh, on turn two by sacrificing this little, you know, six man unit of cultists. Um, and then up here, the yellow unit basically tied it, tied up down, all down here. And this is what it looks like after the charge. So we got the charge. These two failed. So the Nurglings and Demon Nuts failed. So I couldn't get on this side of the Rhino. If I did, these guys would have been in here forever. Uh, the other guys are over here in the, into this tank. The 20 man uh, charged up. Um, this guy's at three wounds left, the little guy in the center. So, and up here, these guys fail the charge. But I'm able to pile in to the tank over here so we can't really move. So once this uh, attack is done, we're gonna pile in and tag this tank. Uh, so we have basically all the tanks tagged. He's got a five man with character over here. Uh, five man with guys in, in, the, in the side there. Typhus came out to play. And you can see we killed the full 10 man unit of Plague Marines over here. Rhino scooted around the corner. This thing's still in the objective. And that was a really good turn too. So his turn two, I uh, get zero for primary because we stole his backfield. We stole the other two objectives. Uh, and then he gets capture enemy outpost, which again, we have most of it blocked off. He has nothing else in reserves and he can't get that. And then behind enemy lines, again, really bad picks for the secondary mission uh, for Death Guard, especially us blocking out his entire board edge or our entire board edge. So just brutal. Um, so then he kind of moves up and starts killing my guys. This is the end of the turn where he basically gets all of his guys out and finishes off this green unit. So he, he comes out, uh, shoots, charges, or doesn't charge because um, Typhus should have basically moved up and just kept one or two guys and then charge. But instead he killed him with shooting. If he doesn't kill him with shooting, he's able to basically get onto the objective and just camp that objective for the rest of the game because I have nothing left on this side of the table. Uh, most of my units are all up here fighting over his backfield objective. And if I hold his backfield objective, I get six points uh, on primary. So he's got nothing to contest this top zone, nothing to contest up here. Demonets are able to move up and charge. And then the other Nurglings came down over here at the top to do more secondaries if needed. So on our turf uh, three, we get assassinate. So we killed one of the characters and then defend stronghold. So I have to defend the stronghold basically just by moving our guys back so we can't get a charge off over here. Then his turn three, he finally gets five points because he controls this bottom objective uh, and he gets no prisoners. So he starts killing people for five points and deploy teleport homers, which he gets for five points as well. So I think he moves the rhino up over here. So that way he's able to get into my uh, my deployment zone, just within, uh, and then he does deploy teleport armors for five, which now I think it's only four in the uh, new Pariah Nexus. Turn four, we get 13, because we held the backfield objective. Uh, we held this one, and we held the backfield, or our objective. So it's 13 points for primary, which is huge in Vital Ground. Uh, no prisoners we get, which we killed uh, two units, and then overwhelming force, we have to take over an objective. So what we do is the red unit finally gets in, bio gets out, um, the unit is dead up here because we charged him with the, with the red unit, and uh, we took over this objective from him. So he's able to kill most of the yellow unit, take the objective back over with the death guard, and then we basically move up, charge, and kill the rest of the death guard up here. So that's how, how we're able to take over the objective up top. Um, the Rhino <laughs> just moves up and gets a charge off onto this guy, just kind of keep him in place. The 20 man, there's two men left still from a 20 man cultist unit. He's got three plague, two plague marines with a character, Typhus, uh, one lone cultist, Playburst Crawler, Rhino, Nerglings came down to deploy, uh, Rhino up here, and then a five man cultist. So all he's left is a five man cultist, or five man plague marines, two plague marines character, Typhus, and a bunch of random tanks. We just have a bunch of random cultists running around the table with still full red unit of a cursed cultist at the top here with bile um, going into turn five we get 13 again on primary which this is basically the end of the board state 
So he's basically advancing up his rhinos into my backfield just to try and get some secondaries. Uh, if he pulls them, like um, he already got captured enemy outpost, so he can't get that. He already got behind enemy line, so he can't get that. So he's just moving up his vehicles as much as possible in my deployment zone to try and do secondaries. Uh, his, his primary is pretty weak because he wasn't able to get out of his deployment zone until turn three. Uh, and then we have all of our cultists just advancing up top here, trying to control his backfield as much as possible. So we have full, almost a full, more than half of our red unit. Uh, Bile with the cultist, two demonettes, nurglings, uh, one ten man, one ten man, uh, and one five man back here. And that's it. So it's a really bloody battle against Death Guard. His turn, five, he gets bottom of the turn. So vital ground, he's able to control this bottom objective for five, my objective for six, so he gets 11. Uh, and then he gets a tempting target, which I'm gonna pick this one up here, so he can't get. I uh, pays the CP to get another one, which is secure no man's land, so he controls this one, so he gets two. And then investigate signals, he's able to investigate um, in this corner with the Rhino for two points. So final board state right here, just kind of mass flood zone uh, to the Death Guard. And then this is the final score right here. So Nolan, Death Guard had 48. Uh, us, Chaos Cult, had 90. So for the primary, we had 40 out of 50. Again, Vital Guard, Vital Ground is really hard for primary missions. Uh, for secondaries, we had 40 out of 40. So this list, even though it was tactical and it's made for fixed, we still did really good for our secondary game. We had really good draws when we needed them, uh, but we got points every single turn. There was no turns that we didn't get any points for our secondaries, which I was super impressed with, with the list. Um, which means that going into Pariah Nexus, we're probably gonna be doing just tactical the entire time uh, for this list. For Nolan, he had 21 out of 50 for primary. He had zero, five, five, and 11. So he's basically fighting over this bottom objective for most of the game. And then for secondaries, he only had 17 out of 40, because uh, we had one, turn one, three, turn two, zero, turn four, zero, and then turn five, four. So that was really tough for the Death Guard, especially not being able to get out of the deployment zone. Again, going first into Death Guard is clutch with Seekers and a Curse Cultist that can advance um, on average like 13 inches across the table and then plus two to charge of so 15 inches. So Curse Cultists are just moving 15 inches across the table and then charging for another seven to 10 inches on top of that. So really hard list. He was he really wanted to see it because he wants to go into like Green Tide and, and Bully Boys and, and Tyranids and all the mass horde lists. So he just wasn't expecting how fast this list was, which most of my opponents didn't expect as well. <laughs> so with the Chaos Cult, uh, what we changed again, there's a whole video on this, but taking out the two Nurglings for or three Nurglings for one Nurgling, adding more Traitor Guardsmen, doing five 10 man units of regular cultists, uh, taking out the 20 mans for the 10 mans, <clears throat> and. Um, Everything else basically stayed the same. So, oh, I actually added Spawn. Spawn is a secret tech in Chaos Space Marines. I said it first. Uh, Spawn is going to be insane with this uh, with this detachment. <laughs> so, oh, I can't wait for that video to come up. So we got Lone Star Open coming up. If you guys see me, come up and say hi. I'll give you some dirtbag dice. Uh, head over to Patreon if you guys want to see these videos ahead of time and support the channel so we can grow more. Uh, we got new microphones for our live games. So that was actually just posted up the other day so check out the new mics uh war games live suggested them so we bought them right away at, at aco uh but it was they sound so freaking good so let me know in the comments below what you liked didn't like how we can improve on the channel uh what we have coming up uh in 2024 with 10,000 subscribers almost getting there with the battle report channel which is super rare but guys appreciate it thanks for all my patreons thanks for supporting the channel uh and we'll see you in another video soon. What's up gents, 40K Dirtbags here. If you guys are thinking about joining the Patreon page, we're gonna go over each tier and how it's gonna benefit you and what you're looking for specifically to get out of 40K in 10th edition coming up. There's a lot of stuff to go over. There's a lot of tactical videos up on the channel, which is for free. There's gonna be a bunch of perks that you get specifically for being a part of the Dirtbag Nation Patreon page. Uh, so first off, we have the first tier, which is a dollar a month. You guys get first access to the videos over at patreon.com. You also get access to the Discord, which is specifically 
uh, a private link in the Discord that only Patreon members can see. So you guys will have first access to that. Also a benefit is Patreons uh, over the Dirtbag Nation get live streamed games on Patreon.com streamed from YouTube, but this only links specifically for the Patreons.com. So not only do you get first access to these videos, you also get to see live stream games specifically only on Patreon.com. The next tier is the Justicar. You guys get a shout out on every single video uh, on YouTube. You also get to support us a little bit more. You get first dibs uh, at voting on Discord, as well as you just kind of say, hey, I just want to be a uh, Justicar dirtbag and support you guys a little bit more than that dollar a month here. Uh, but you have get all the same access uh, as well as the um, different color over on the, uh, the Discord. So the third tier is the competitive dirtbag. Uh, this tier, you get a lot more one-on-one -on -one coaching. This is a lot of the dirtbags over on the Dirtbag Nation. They are able to send out messages one-on-one, -on -one, go over list ideas, tactics, anything you guys want to talk about. When I was getting into 40K or really any game in general, I always wanted to message the top players in the meta and just ask them questions. This $10 a month tier gets you that opportunity to message us one-on-one -on, -one on Discord, so that way we can actually coach you, give you our insights, suggestions, and that's gonna get you better at the 40K uh, 10th edition as a whole. So that tier alone, just $10 a month to have one-on-one -on -one coaching, one-on-one -on -one messages anytime throughout the month, that's gonna be a perfect tier for you guys. Even if you're brand new to the game, we go over a thousand point list, 1500 point list, 2000 point brand new starting list, team list, anything you guys need, that's what the competitive dirtbag tier is for. Uh, also, you get a little bit of uh, red number uh, name tag on uh, Discord so people know that you're really serious about getting into the competitive scene. The Grand Master Dirtbags. This is the all in all $25 a month tier. You get one on one coaching, everything we said uh, prior to this, but you guys get to see me, Mike, any of the other dirt bags play your specific list that you want to see tested out live on one of our battle reports. You guys get to mention, suggest videos you guys want to see coming up on patreon.com. So you guys get the above first tier benefit of everything that we do over at Dirtbag Nation. All the support mainly comes from you guys supporting us over here at Dirtbag Nation. And Grandmasters, I can't thank you enough, but for $25 a month, you get one-on-one -on -one coaching and anything you want to see live on the tabletop. So you get, get to see a professional play uh, right in front of you. You guys get to kind of like see it one-on-one -on -one, and I'm actually making this specifically for you. There's also TTS events that you guys can uh, suggest. If you guys want to do a first one or two turn run through on TTS, we can actually log in and coach you one-on-one -on -one with that. If you guys see us at any GTs, uh, you guys get sp uh, special benefits, free dice, stuff like that. Anytime you purchase a merch thing on Discord, you guys get a free uh, limited edition dirtbag dice sent to you with every single purchase on top of that. Uh, so there's a lot of benefits coming up with the Grandmaster Dirtbag. But guys, I can't thank you enough for supporting us. Definitely let me know which tier would be best for you if you go over to patreon.com and specifically go to a tier. And make sure you don't forget to message me up on Discord. That's where we check every single day. If you guys are really into getting into 10th edition 40k, head over to the Patreon, join the Competitor Dirtbag or the Grandmaster, message me as many times as you possibly want, uh, and I'll coach you the best I possibly can uh, on any specific army that you guys play. Mainly our armies right now, currently, uh, going into 2024 is gonna be Chaos Space Marines, uh, Grey Knights, Death Guard, uh, and then we have uh, Custodes, Sisters, and I think that's it going into the wings of 2024. But again, any other army that you guys play, we have other coaches lined up for the dirtbags that are ready to take on that role of the competitive dirtbag page. So guys, really appreciate it. Thanks for clicking on the video. Thanks for joining the Dirtbag Nation if you guys are already part of us, and we'll see you in another video soon.